So, my dear brothers and sisters, in the account of the Passion according to Luke that we together have just proclaimed, we heard that above him there was an inscription that read, This is the King of the Jews. Now, in the church of Santa Croce in Jerusalem, that in English it's called the Basilica of the Holy Cross in Jerusalem, although the church is in Rome, that's the title of the church, there is a relic called the title of the cross, or titulus crucis. And that is the tablet that Pilate ordered to be placed on the cross over the head of Jesus. Now you can see it, even though we've covered the cross quite a bit, we can still see it up there on our cross. And that is announcing Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews, written in three languages, Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. Now, in, all, in, in the passion narratives of all four Gospels, Jesus is referred to as the King of the Jews. And this was arguably the reason, well, it's more like the excuse or the cover that the religious leaders used and even Pilate eventually used to justify our Lord's execution. But in meditating on this mystery of our Lord's passion, the theme of Jesus as king and the reality of the kingdom of God is central. I don't think we can ignore that, but we must kind of think about it. We must ponder it, because the, king, the term kingdom of God is, re, is referred six times in this account from Luke, and I think it's at least that many in the other three Gospels, at least in the synoptics, so that would be Matthew, Mark as well. And our Lord himself in this text says the kingdom of God several times, and he tells his apostles, I confer a kingdom on you that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. The good thief we hear cries out and asking for mercy. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. So what is this kingdom like? Now, we know that Jesus spoke many times in the gospel of the kingdom of God and gave us some examples but while dying the horrible, torturous death of a crucifixion, our Lord says to that good thief, Today you will be with me in paradise. Now, when our Lord says paradise, he is saying so much more than what we may describe as paradise on earth. Maybe when we say paradise, we think of some tropical island. Right, some South Pacific Island, or maybe Hawaii. But in these places, even though they're beautiful, they're still, you can get a very severe sunburn. <laughs> right, and get your clothes stolen off the beach, which happened to me, but I won't go into the details of that at some point. <laughs> maybe later, I'll give you that story. But, but that idea of paradise here on earth is still, there's still trial, there's still limit, right? But in, when we speak of the kingdom of God, that is beyond all earthly limits, beyond everything that, that we encounter here in this, in this life, all of those struggles and trials and um, difficulties, sickness, death, sin, evil, that his kingdom is beyond all of that. No matter how much we can build on earth here, we will always have those limits. Because in the kingdom of God, there is no limit to love. Because God is love without limit. And our Lord, in dying on the cross for us, suffering what he suffered, shows us this, that he gives his whole self Right, body and blood, right? He opens himself completely. And that is showing God's love is without limit. And that is the kingdom of God. No limit to forgiveness. That every and all sin can be forgiven. 
Think of that good thief, like right at the last moment of life on earth, that he was granted that forgiveness and mercy, no matter what he had done, no matter how bad his crime. There's no limit to peace and joy, and peace is beyond our understanding of peace here. We think of no fighting or, or no tension as peace. That's not really the full fullness of peace. Now, of course, you have to have no fighting and no tension, uh, no resentments. Um, to have you know, that peace, uh, but there's something so much more to it. And of course, that joy is resting in God's love. So in the kingdom of God, there is full uh, and complete happiness, full and complete satisfaction that we are at that heavenly banquet where our deepest desires, what we're made for, is completely fulfilled. Now, our Lord Jesus is, though, the only way to that kingdom of unlimited love, un unlimited life, unlimited joy. And in the suffering that our Lord willingly undergoes in his passion and death, that Jesus, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, he opens up that kingdom for us in that passion and death. As we heard, the veil of the temple was torn down the middle, showing that whatever was separating us from God, sin has now been removed. That we now can enter into that divine life, into the kingdom of God. And that we have through our Lord's broken body, right, this body on the cross that was just mangled and torn by the, by the scourging and the, the brutality of what he underwent in that, in that passion and carrying that heavy cross and all of the uh, blows that he endured from the soldiers uh, and then the pierced side being opened and, his, and the blood and water flowing from his heart, that in all of that he is opening up the kingdom of God. So he opens his body as the way through into the kingdom. And in our baptism, we have made, been made citizens of that kingdom. But not just citizens. We also share in his royal power. That we are truly his children. And that we have been redeemed, made holy by what our Lord suffered and the blood that he was willing to shed for each of us. So let us, my brothers and sisters, really think about this this week. What does it mean to be part of that kingdom and to authentically, to resolve authentically to live that kingly dignity and to follow our king as the way and not to be deceived by following the false ways of the world, the false ways of trying to replace the kingdom of God with the kingdom of man. And that is what the world proposes, that we can do whatever we want without God. We can find our happiness without God. That's what the world says. That is what the dominant narrative is. That's what the media continues to promote. But the kingdom that the world is building is a kingdom that is a delusion. It's an illusion. It's based on selfishness. It's based on the me, myself, and I. And that we don't want to be deceived to follow that false ways of materialism and sensualism. The false ways of being constantly plugged in and constantly stimulated. Our minds are, are entertained. Or that false ways of working for only and stressing out uh, about accomplishing things in this world and having worldly honors. Or having more and better experiences, building up our retirement accounts or having expensive vacations in earthly paradises, like Hawaii. But that Jesus, we have to remember, is the way to the real kingdom, that full kingdom, the fullness of what our hearts really ache for and yearn and want. That he is the truth. That to belong to the kingdom, we have to have Jesus as our king. Right, that makes sense. You can't be part of the kingdom if he's not your king. But what we need to do, as it says in John's gospel, is need to belong to the truth. So we need to listen to Jesus who is truth. 
and listen to his voice. And that voice is proclaimed today fully in the teachings of the church, in the Roman Catholic Church, in her teachings, in her sacraments, and her saints. That our Lord Jesus is the life. That he's the life of God, right? Is God's life, divine life, life abundantly. And that is the life that we celebrate, that we renew and are strengthened into, or we are strengthened in that life by the sacraments of the church, particularly the Holy Eucharist. And that is, a, as Jesus says, that heavenly banquet that we will be part of, that we will eat and drink at his table. That is what we do in every Mass, right? To know that this is the way into that eternal banquet in heaven. And that we want to receive our Lord worthily and be ready. So that means a good confession. And we have some extra confession times this week to make that possible for, for you to come and to have your sins forgiven so that on Easter you can receive our Lord Jesus. Now, as we continue in this celebration of the Eucharist through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our mother, and our patron, St. Joseph, let us ask for the grace we need to remain faithful to our Lord and accompany him on the way of the cross in his passion. And through that death, to be with him all the way to the end, because he remains faithful to us always. And so we want to remain faithful to him so that we may then enter in more fully into that kingdom and live the kingdom of God in our daily lives even now. And to know that the risen Lord when he rises again on Easter Sunday, when we celebrate that, that we'll have that joy and to know that he is the way, the truth, and the life.